From Esther Baptist Church on Witcher Creek, it's preaching time with Pastor Randy Wilson. blessing to be celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the, uh, the bedrock of, of Christianity is the resurrection. If Jesus didn't raise from the dead, then our preaching is vain, your faith is vain, we might as well turn out the lights and go home. We've been false witnesses of God. But we testified that he's alive. Amen. He came by and visited me one time. And I know because of his living in my heart that he's real. But if I'd never been born, he'd still be real. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Matthew chapter 28 and Mark chapter 16. I want to give you a couple of accounts of the resurrection today. And... Uh, We'll let you go do whatever y'all do on Sunday night. Matthew chapter 28 and Mark chapter 16. I'd like to read these. We got, there's five different accounts of the resurrection of Jesus. Matthew gives the resurrection of the king. Amen. Mark gives the resurrection of the servant. Luke gives the resurrection of the Son of Man. John gives the resurrection of the Son of God. And the Apostle Paul gives us the resurrection of our Savior. Five different accounts, five different stories, all about the same man, five different pictures. Well, we'll, we'll take a couple of them today. Matthew chapter 28, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. Behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He ain't here. Hallelujah. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. That's a very important statement there. He didn't go to Jerusalem, he went to Galilee. Amen. Go ye, uh, before you into Galilee, there shall ye see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, did run to bring the disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail, and they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. All right, in, in the uh, uh, Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 16, again we'll start reading verse 1. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. They said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And in the end of the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples, and by the way, tell Peter why you had it. Peter had lost his discipleship. He had not lost his salvation. 
he lost his, see what, what they say, tell his disciples and Peter. <laughs> if he had lost his salvation, he wouldn't have been interested in talking to him. Tell you to his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. Our Heavenly Father, thank you today for this privilege to pray. Lord, I ask you to help our thoughts, guide our thoughts, Father, that we not be confused. Lord, that we'd be able to preach the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. I pray, our Father, for those that watch by whatever means that they watch today. God, whether they be here in the sanctuary, whether they watch it by the internet or the television or ever how it may be, this gospel goes out. I pray that it may be to the glory of him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Help us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, before the Sabbath was over, as the Bible said there in Matthew 28, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, uh, teaching that Jesus had actually arisen before sunrise. It was just now dawning towards the first day of the week whenever they came. Two Marys came to the tomb. And they came for what purpose, preacher? Uh, they certainly didn't come to see him raised from the dead because they didn't expect that he'd raised from the dead. But I think that, that anyone that's ever lost a friend or lost a loved one, it's not an unusual thing for them to go to the tomb. It's not an unusual thing for them to visit the grave of a dear friend. Sometimes they'll go there just to decorate it with flowers, or sometimes because even though the soul is gone, that body has a significance to people. I remember whenever they took away my dad and took away my mom. Remember both the occasions and how I knew they weren't in that body, but yet that body had a significance. And we transfer emotional pain into physical pain. We transfer that longing in our soul. And we crave to have something that we can touch. We crave to have something that we can handle. I had a funeral this week over in Boone County. And one of the things that they always say is, would you like to have a flower from the casket? And people, what's that flower? It's nothing. But it's just something physical. You understand what I'm saying? Something physical that would remind them. Something they can see. Something they can handle. Something they can perceive. Be honest with you, man is prone to idolatry. We like to have our hands on something to handle. One body said, we like to have people with skin on. We, you know, we know all about the spiritual world, but we like to have somebody with skin on them. And so it's not an unusual thing for folks to go to the grave thousands of years. And so I don't know, I don't think like a lot of folks, but, but I wonder if Adam and Eve ever went out there to the grave of Abel. <laughs> Their son that was murdered by his own brother. And I don't know, the Bible doesn't mention it, but I wonder if they went out there and stood there by the grave and, and wept over him. And I can see that for a thousand years. People would go to the grave and they would weep over that loved one that's gone. And they knew had nobody, they, they knew had never anybody came back from the grave. Oh, but this morning's different. That's right. <laughs> There is, a, there is something different going on in the graveyard that day. Over in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 2, there was an earthquake. 
And the angel of the Lord descended. And as he descended, the angel had a countenance that's described just like, well, just like the Lord Jesus in Revelation chapter 1. He had a, a face like lightning and a blinding light that outshined the sun. In verse number 4 there, I'm in Matthew for a while I'm preaching there. Uh, uh, it said, for fear of him the keepers did shake. You see that? The, the Roman soldiers did shake. Well, Roman soldiers don't shake, brother. That you're talking about a hand-picked, disciplined, intelligent, courageous, physical condition. You're talking about people that live for one purpose. That was to obey their orders. And nothing or nobody is going to make them shake. I mean, they're, they're like the green berets of our army or like the Navy SEALs or, or what, Delta Force or whatever. No, no, nobody, could, nobody could intimidate them. Uh, you could not get them to even be afraid of nothing. They perceived no fear. Uh, uh, you, could not, uh, you could not overcome them physically. Uh, uh, you couldn't, but the angel of God can. For fear of him, that angel, these hardened soldiers, these guards did shake. And in verse number six, he, that same angel said to the, uh, uh, to the women, you're looking for Jesus. He's not here. He rose just like he said he would. Those, those guys are just over there shell-shocked, immobile, not, not able to move. Uh, uh, but uh, announcing for the, what I'm saying is the bedrock of Christianity, Amen. that Jesus arose from the dead. That's what Easter's about. I use the pagan term, but that's what Easter's about. It's the day that they found him. It wasn't the day he arose. He rose before they got there. But it was the day that they found he was alive from the dead. The Apostle Paul had a revelation uh, that put it in perspective. He said if Jesus hadn't risen from the dead, then all we're doing is vain. If the resurrection's not true, uh, then our preaching is vain. If the resurrection didn't happen, your faith is vain. Every good, solid testimony of every Christian for the last 2,000 years has been a witness and a false witness. If Jesus did not raise from the dead, amen, worse still, if Jesus didn't raise from the dead, there'd be no resurrection. Our sins are not forgiven because the Bible said he was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. The old account has not been settled unless Jesus arose from the dead. But have Hallelujah today. Jesus is alive and well. Amen. Dead people are dead people. There is no hope and they'll never be back. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, our hourly jeopardy that we put ourselves in is for a false cause. The loved ones that uh, have sown in corruption or stay in corruption. They've sown in dishonor. They'll stay in weakness and natural position. The sons of Adam will all be just like everybody else, just a fade of dust, just like an animal. Because Jesus arose from the dead, amen, this corruptor is going to put on incorruption. Because Jesus arose from the dead, this dishonor is going to have glory one day. Because of the resurrection, this weakness is going to have power. This natural man is going to have a spiritual man. The first Adam is going to give way to the last Adam. And I bore the image of the earthly. Thank God I'm going to bear the image of the heavenly one day. Because of the resurrection of Jesus. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. But I'll show you a mystery. We're not all going to sleep. Amen. We're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkle of an eye. And because of Jesus' resurrection. Are you looking for him? Yeah. I think about as they're going around looking for Easter eggs. <laughs> you know, was no need to look for them. My house didn't have any. They're not there. <laughs> well, I, won't, I won't beat you up. No, I, I won't beat you up. Uh, I, I feel kind of lenient tonight. But I see people, people going around looking, you know, ain't nothing there. Ain't nothing there. Ain't nothing there. People went around looking for Jesus. 
Do you know the Pharisees would have loved to have found his body? Oh, yeah. If they could have produced his body, that's all they'd have had to do. Yeah. Produced his body, they would have, as Barney Fife said, they would have nipped it in the bud. Right. They'd have never got off the ground. Yep. You know why they couldn't produce it? Because it wasn't there. Amen. Amen. Where is it, preacher? It rose just like he said he would. I know where it is today. 2,000 years later, it's seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. Amen. Jesus is alive. Amen. Hallelujah. He's alive forevermore. Matthew 28 20, and verse 7, he bypassed Jerusalem. He didn't go back to Jerusalem. He'd been to Jerusalem. You remember? Yeah. It was Jerusalem that... that uh, that rejected him when he stood outside the city on the Mount of Olives and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them I sent unto you. How often would I gather you together as a hen would gather her fruit under her wing and you would not. And he stood there and wept over that city. But whenever he came from the life, uh, came from the dead, he said, hey, you go tell my disciples, I won't see them down at the temple. I won't be down there in Jerusalem. You tell them go to Galilee. I'll show them what I want them to do up there. Galilee is where they first went. Galilee means that, that's the circuit. And, and it, Galilee is where we got the Great Commission. Galilee is where the failed Peter was restored. Amen. Galilee is where the, the wedding took place. You remember Galilee is where they received him, John 4, 45. He bypassed Jerusalem because the city had rejected him. You see, God doesn't reject us until we reject him. But be warned, whenever we reject him, there is a time when he says that's enough and he rejects us and he moves on. Do you ever notice how the gospel started at Jerusalem? And it went on westward. It, that was a horse. Greeley said, go west, young man. As it went on, it, it proceeded. And, and somebody said, well, he could have went. He could have went into. No, he couldn't. He couldn't go into Asia. He wanted to go to Asia. But the Holy Spirit of God throwed up a bus. Said, don't come this way, Paul. Go that way. You remember? And the gospel transferred over to Europe. And as it transferred to Europe, it went on over to America. And then they tell me that it kind of went across to America westward, you know, the Cumberland revivals and, and right on out to the west coast. And now, now they tell me they're having revival over in the Far East. Nations like Korea having revival. Why, why, you, make, why you mention that, preacher? Simply for this, whenever you reject him so long, he'll just write you off. Oh, I pray that God would not write America off. I, I pray, you know, the wicked will be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. And I said this before, here we are, we're fat. Amen. We live in air-conditioned houses, drive air-conditioned cars and heated in the winter time and set on comfort controlled seats. Uh, am I telling it right? And we complain about somebody talked about us in the back of the church. We sorry, man. Uh, God owes us nothing. He can write us off anytime. All that won't accept him uh, will be rejected. If you want to accept him, you know what you got to do? You got to get out of Jerusalem. You got to come outside the camp. Amen. You can't, you can't be in the accepted society and be uh, accepted by Jesus because the society didn't accept him. And he said, you come outside the gate, outside the camp, and you'll be accepted. No doubt in his uh, Caiaphas and his crowd of chief priests, uh, 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 they were uh, having a big-eyed time thinking, well, we've got rid of that heretic. They were possessed of the devil. They betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ, arrested him unlawfully, tried him illegally, condemned him unlawfully, and, and now they try to buy their way out of it by telling those guards, we'll pay them off if they come to you and say anything about it. The disciples were forsaking Jerusalem, going up to Galilee. Amen. The soldiers were going up to the chief priest. And the chief priest was going to the dogs. 
and then he's going to hell. 2,000 years, the Galilean Commission is still there. We are to go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe whatsoever things that the Lord Jesus has commanded us. I'm thinking about uh, whenever the women had bought spices. That's what it said, bought spices because the Sabbath was over. I'm thinking that, that Judas had uh, accompanied about uh, uh, and thinking, well, man, that'd be a waste of money. Well, you're right. It was a waste of money because they didn't need them. Amen. They bought those for the purpose of making a dead body smell good. They were going there for the purpose, uh, just like uh, uh, trying, if you'd call as uh, close as we could come to end bombing, trying to make a dead body. You know, you can't make a dead body smell good. Hey Amen. Did you ever go by a possum laying on the side of the road, what done swelled up and his hair is falling off of him and he's ready to eat with a fork? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, you ever go, uh, You can't make him smell good. You, if you think a possum smells bad, you ought to get a dead human being. I don't care how much spices you got, you can't make that. But they were intending to do that. When they went there, they had the idea, we're going to make him smell good. Hey, brother, I, I want to tell you something. He's a sweet-smelling savior uh, uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is to God the Father. He already smells good. You can't help him out. <laughs> Waste of money. Wasteful women. <laughs> One of those wasteful women was uh, Mary Magdalene. Uh, and I think that lady gets a bad reputation. Uh, there's no scripture that says anything above the idea that she's just an ordinary sinner. I mean, you know, they, they, there's no indication that she was a harlot. Everybody thinks she was, but there's no indication of that. She did have seven devils. Amen, there's indication of that. But uh, having a heart of that, uh, that uh, I don't see how she uh, uh, could be accused of that, but they do, you know, they'll, they'll do that all the time anyway. But they lingered at the cross, those women did. And they had looked there on Jesus as he was pierced. They lingered there, and they loved him, and they had the idea they would come in there, and they would bring these spices to help him out. But you know what? Whenever you get close to him, amen, you're going to try to help him out. Uh, you know what you'll find out? He don't need your help, but he sure can help you. Amen. 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 Mary was not a preacher, but she was a witness. <laughs> amen. I think girls can witness. I don't have any problem with them witnessing. <laughs> amen. Uh, but her testimony was... Uh, uh, crying time, but crying time is past. Amen. Weeping is endured for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. Uh, and uh, uh, the disciples didn't believe her. Imagine the wonder. I don't think I'd believe her. Did you? I mean, you know, if, if somebody would come up and say, hey, uh, somebody, you just had their funeral and, and you buried him and, and he ain't in the grave. I'd say, her shawl I'd say no that can't be true the disciples didn't believe her well can you imagine the wonder as they went out there they, man, man, they got a big old stone in front of this tomb now how are we going to get the stone rolled away let me tell you if you fall on the rock the stone will roll away <laughs> there is a big barrier between you and God but if you will fall on the rock, amen, that barrier will be taken away. There in Mark chapter 16 and verse 5, said there was a young man sitting there. Now, besides the fact that angels appear to young men, I want to help you out. There ain't no old men in heaven. <laughs> amen. You know, somebody said, I saw John the Baptist walking down the street of glory, had a big old beard and walking with a cane. And not in glory, honey. Amen. Amen. The old will be young through the ages, transformed in a moment of time. Amen. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be good to be young again? You know what I'm talking about. Some of you knows more about what I'm talking about than us. Wouldn't it be good, I mean, to just be in the very prime of life and health? Said so I saw a young man, a young man. Well, there ain't no old man in heaven. They're all young, but he had a message. His message was, you're looking for a dead Savior. 
You're looking for a powerless Savior. No such Savior here. He's not here. We're not looking. Uh, you will never find him. He was dead. He was powerless, but he's not dead now. He's alive forevermore. Uh, in chapter uh, 16 and verse 7, he said, You go tell his disciples, and why are you at it? Tell Peter. Amen. Uh, 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 that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that cursing, uh, 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 denying three times sinner, tell him, Hey, I'll meet him up in Galilee and we'll fix him up. We'll straighten that out. We need the ministry of Galilee. Amen. Verse 12, after unbelief, he appeared to his disciples in another form. I don't think I read that. I'm in Mark chapter, chapter 16 there. But he appeared. Did you ever wonder about it? What do you mean appeared in another form? Huh. That ought to be another sermon. Maybe I ought to save that one. He appeared in another form. Whatever that form was. Uh, they didn't know who he was. Amen. Amen. I remember when they were out there fishing and they, they, they didn't know who it was. Do you? Yeah. Their eyes were holding. They'd been used to seeing that Jew dressed in Orthodox Jewish attire. <laughs> now he shows himself as something completely different. He's no longer dressed in earthly garb. But unsaved a friend of mine, if you're looking for a powerless Jesus, if you're looking for a, a one that uh, you'll have to carry the load yourself, hey, you're looking for the wrong one. Uh, you'll never be able to carry it. The load's too big. But thank God you can cast your cares on him and he can carry it because he cares for you. Amen. Don't look to a dead Jesus. Amen. Amen. Don't, you know, don't look to a crucifix. Thinking, you know, that, that there was... Don't even look to Gethsemane. Don't look to the, uh, don't look to the thorn crown suffering. Uh, he was there. He did suffer. He was crowned with thorns. Uh, uh, but I tell you what, he's not crowned with thorns now. And one of these days, by the grace of God, he's coming again in power and great glory. He's Jesus is alive Amen, and he's gave a commission to the church, and the, t the commission is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. 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 <laughs> he's not here. He's risen just like he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Let's bow for prayer. Jesus said it is expedient for me to go away, but I'll send you another comforter to guide you from day to day. So they tarried at Jerusalem for power from on high, that same spirit that they Sometimes it feels so gentle and sometimes like a mighty rushing wind. But that same spirit that raised Jesus up from death and the grave, it shall raise this old body up and take me home someday. big old stone at the door they put soldiers there to guard it you know they thought they did away with my lord but on the third day the stone was rolled away and he came forth from the grave that same spirit that raised jesus up will take me home someday and i can feel his holy spirit dwelling deep within well sometimes it feels so gentle and sometimes like a mighty rushing wind but that's 
same spirit that raised Jesus up from death and the grave. It shall raise his own body up and take me home someday. It shall raise his own body up and take me home someday. Unless we humble ourselves and become as a little child and see the Lord Jesus that has died for our sins and resurrected from the grave, we'll never be saved. We'll never be saved till we get lost.